Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we are back with some more NCAA 06, and we got two bye weeks, and we got the camp conference championship weekend that we are not a part of, and hopefully nothing crazy happens, and we can still be ranked number two and go to that national championship game. Jeff Ross, he signed on the dotted line, he is our second recruit to sign during the end season process, receiver, four star recruit out of Ohio. We are Big Ten champs. We took on Purdue in the de facto Big Ten championship game. There's no official one, so it was the unofficial one. And we got the job done on the road, man. And we have won that beautiful trophy yet again. Doak Walker Award goes to R.J. Larkins. He has turned out to be a fabulous running back, and he's only a sophomore, so we still have another year with him, all right? And hopefully he does not get hurt or suffer any major problems, okay? Conference championship week, you got Western Michigan over Miami of Ohio. Florida, they fought to LSU. Texas, they beat Colorado by five. And then NC State was ranked number three in the nation. They beat Virginia Tech, who was ranked number one in the nation, who was undefeated. They dropped all the way down to five. They drop all the way down to five after being there. Now, that was my concern. If they lose, will they be ranked number two, number three, or number five? I didn't know, but it's going to be number five. So we are still ranked number two, and we're going to be taking on North Carolina State, NC State, the Wolfpack, and the Hoosiers. It should be a good one in Tempe, Arizona. So now let's see who brought home that Heisman Trophy. I'm Brad Nessler, and I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight in New York City for the presentation of the Heisman Trophy. As you all know, this is a very special award. The winner will go down in history with all the other former greats that have won this award before him. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Heisman Trophy. Congratulations, young man. You've earned it. So it is going to be a receiver, but it's not going to be our guy. Now, he actually brings back punts from Miami as well. So that had a lot to do with it. And the receiving numbers, 87 catches. I believe Willis had less than 60. I never get, like, our main guy that many catches because we like to spread the ball around and we go deep a lot. And we still focus on the ground game with every team that I control. So having a receiver win a Heisman for me that does not have a big impact in the return game is probably not going to be something that happens too often. I don't think it has happened at all. Again, like Aaron Coley was different. <laughs> he was different. He had like 2,000 yards receiving year in and year out. He, he was different. He was my first really great receiver when we did the Alaska, uh, Alaska Tech University uh, ATU to be exact, man. Uh, but we've had some great receivers, especially with SAU, we had some good ones. Prime U, we had some good receivers with Prime U. Um, and then, oh, the, that one receiver that we had with uh, Eastern Illinois, he was a ma. His name was, I think it was like Ryan, I wanna say. I can't I can't remember his name, but he was an absolute beast, man. I'm gonna have to rewatch some of my series because some of the receivers we had were absolute beasts. And Patrick, he was beastly at times, but he also had some drops. Um, and he wasn't the most explosive guy, um, but hopefully he comes back for another year. He is a redshirt sophomore, which I mean he's a junior, and when you're a junior or your third year removed from high school football, you are eligible for the NFL. So we'll see what he does. Um, again, anybody's open to do what they feel like is best because at some point we'll be abandoning Indiana. Now, I don't want to abandon them and then they turn into like USC at the Pete Carroll Leagues. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would like to abandon them when they are still one of the better teams in the nation and they can still win the Big Ten. But who knows? I'm going to just do what I feel like is best like all these selfish coaches do anyway, man. Uh, so here go the award winners. Again, you saw what we won. Uh, I want to see where you finish in the Belenikoff or the Best Receiver Award. And that is number two. Number two to Davidson. And this is the first year in two years that we have not won the Thorpe Award. But did we get in the top three? Because that would be very interesting to see if you ask me. So well, did we get in the top three? And the answer to that is yes. Keys, he got number two. So it was... It was um, it was McNamara, he won it one year, then Battle, he won it last year, and now Keys, he got second. So, it's something about those safeties that we just know how to do, you know what I'm saying? We just know how to create these safeties and make them some beast out there. 
So RJ Larkins, he's gonna be first team All-American, obviously. So is Patrick Willis, the best receiver in the Big Ten. That's pretty obvious. No old lineman love though. And, and again, when you have the best running back, your old lineman got to get some credit. And we have not one old lineman on the first team All-American list. Not a linebacker neither. But Keys, he's the starting free safety and the starting strong safety. He's not the Thorpe winner. No, it's Johnny Thomas from Texas Tech. The Thorpe Award winner was a strong safety. But he's not getting no first team All-American love. I mean, I don't know how that works, but that's just how it works. You can win the trophy for being the best DB in the nation, but they're not even first team at your spot. That's kind of peculiar, if you ask me. So, again, no O-line love for the All-American list. No D-line love for the second team either. You know what I'm saying? Linebackers, no. Cornerback, no. Battle, did he get second team All-American? No, but there goes Donald. He got it. Obviously, he should. You know what I'm saying? And then when it comes to the freshman squad, I don't think we really had any freshmen this year that balled out. Buchanan, he came on. I want to say Buchanan's a freshman. Actually, yeah, our D-line was pretty young. D-line was pretty young. I want to say Buchanan. I feel like Buchanan was a sophomore. This was his first year playing for us on a consistent basis. But, yeah, I don't think we're going to have anybody on the freshman team either. But we are set up fairly well for the future. Like, we have some young guys who are sophomores and redshirt sophomores that I think are going to come back. So we're going to have a, a good group of upperclassmen, and we should be okay. So first team, Big Ten. We got the homie Courtney Johnson, then Larkins, and then Willis, and then any other receivers? No. Any old linemen? Like, like did we get first team on our conference? No. Like, that's insane to me. Th like, seriously, that's insane. Frazier, he is first team, Big Ten, at the outside linebacker spot. Then we got Greenwood. He is the second cornerback on the Big Ten first team. And then we got Keys up in there as well. And then Stewart, Big Isaiah Stewart, sophomore receiver. He is the number one receiver on the second team in the Big Ten. That's a good look for him. Any, any O-Lyman? Again, no O-Lyman love. We have the best running back in the nation. I guess he just did it by himself. I mean, hey, maybe he did. I don't know. But geez, Louise, you think our O-Lyman gets some love? Battle. He got it for second team Big Ten. So did our kicker, Big Johnson. All right. So here are the winners and losers from the ball games. We're not going to be doing any uh, live sims or anything like that. We're just going to sim it with the CPU versus CPU, see the results. And then our next episode will be the national championship game. And that's what everybody wants to see anyway. Can we win it this year is the question. Last year, we took an L. It was heartbreaking. We lost to Stanford. Uh, Stanford, they were ranked number 17 to end the season, and they uh, they put hands on Fresno State, 52 to 31. So they had a down year. I mean, you win the national championship to play in Fresno State in the I don't know ball. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That that <laughs> that's gonna be a little bit rough. You know what I mean? Uh, but here we go, man. Fiesta Bowl, Indiana, NC State, June 3rd should be a good one. Tell her the tape. It's right here. No A's for nobody. We got a B-plus overall, B-plus offense, B-defense. They have a B-plus overall, B-offense, and a B-plus defense. So it's going to be strength on strength. Who's going to prevail? I don't know. And even though their offense might not be that great, they're second in points behind us. So they definitely know how to fill it up. Maybe their defense scores some points. Most likely that, that that's probably the case. Uh, but, yeah, it should be a good one, man. The Wolfpack, the Hoosiers, I hope to see you all there. Hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And until we meet again, my friends, peace, love, hot sauce.